1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, where the Bible says, but as, let's see, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Our topic today is, you just don't know. You just don't know. And our subtopic is, it will work out. It will work out. Amen, amen. I, I am just, I'm just amazed at how much people, especially of the world, rely on themselves rather than rely on God. Some folk think they know everything and that they don't need God in their lives. Other folk will try to confront you and challenge you to prove that God even exists. And I used to get caught up in stuff like that and fighting battles that only God can fight. And I started flipping the script on them and I said, well, you prove to me that he does not exist. And the more they tried to prove that God did not exist, the more they wound up proving that God does exist. And, 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 and I'm so grateful that I have a knowledge of God. There are so many people, even in high places, that just don't know God. Oh, they know man's philosophies. They know all the theories and the, the theorems and all of that. They, they, they know all of the academia and, and all of those things, but they just don't know God. When we look at the wickedness that is in our land today, it is an indication that man has forgotten who God is. Man has forgotten. Uh, when Adam and Eve walked in the Garden of, of, of Eden, they knew who God was. The Bible says that you could even hear God's voice. Amen. Hello, yeah. you could hear God's voice walking through the garden. Yeah. What kind of God is that? That his voice even walks. And, and Adam and Eve knew who God was. They walked with God. They talked with God. They were able to see God. But now man has forgotten who God is. We look at how people are killing one another today. It's because they just don't know God. You, you see how people lie. And, and, and they open their mouth and, and they could go ahead and tell the truth, but they choose to tell a lie. It's because they just don't know God. You, you, you see how people are, 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 are so contrary that when they should be doing right, they would rather do wrong. When they should be going left, they wind up going in another direction. Or when God says stand still, they can't stand still. They still got to, hello somebody, they still got to go on and try to do something anyhow. They just don't know God. Well, let me tell you about some other folk that don't know God. They're right there in the church. Oh, I ain't just talking to folk outside now. I'm talking about folk in the church that just don't know God. They walk in the church looking at the clock. Hello, and, and, and it is usually the, the last one to come wants to be the first one to... We got to be careful and mindful that we do know God. Amen. But sometimes we act like we just don't know him. When we talk about one another, when we beat up and batter one another, when we just can't show love to one another for nothing, we just don't know God. But my Bible says that God is love. That means that I got to love you. You got to love me whether you want to or not. Because God said that we got to do it. There are a lot of folk that don't know God. A lot of folk in the church and 
a lot of folk out of the church. And Paul here, as he was writing to the folk in Corinth, Paul had been disappointed by, by some reports that he had gotten from the church at Corinth. There was one brother in that congregation that was challenging Paul. Paul would say one thing, Deacon Chuck, this brother would say another. Y'all don't know folk like that, do you? They don't have them in Alabama, do they? Amen. But they, 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 have them in, they had them in Corinth. I don't believe we got any here in Turning Point. But if we do, you need to go on and show your hand. Hello, somebody. But, but, but this one brother was always challenging Paul. Paul had got to the point that he didn't even want to go to Corinth. So instead of him going, he just wrote a letter. We call it 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Well, in 1st Corinthians, Paul had just come into a knowledge of Jesus Christ and they accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Paul was excited about Jesus Christ. Are we still excited about the Lord? You know, if we are really excited about Jesus, we'd be telling somebody about him. Because that's what Paul did. And even though Paul had been one that had persecuted the people of God, now here he is holding up the standards of Jesus Christ and telling everybody that he knew about this man named Jesus, him crucified, him buried, and him rose again. Paul was excited about this thing. And he wrote to the church at Corinth. But he wrote a different letter to the church at Corinth. He wrote them not out of strength, not out of power, not out of great eloquent and big words. He approached them from a standpoint of weakness. You see, some of us have gotten too strong in ourselves. Yeah, you know how it is. You say we don't got so grown and so big and so strong. We smelling ourselves now. <laughs> Amen. 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 Some of us like that now. We smell you too. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And Paul, instead of writing them with the authority that he had in Jesus Christ, he wrote them as a friend, as a brother, in weakness. And he did not try to razzle and dazzle them with great things and big words and all of that. He just kept it plain and simple. Don't you know that those kind of messages are the ones that really go to your heart? When somebody just cry out and make it real. When you know that they talking to you from their heart. Not something that they don't rehearse and went over and practice on and all that. But, but it's something that is just coming from their spirit. From, from the Spirit of God. And those are the messages that go so far with us because they resonate with our heartstrings. And the Holy Ghost begins to minister to us and through us because we have yielded and opened up to the Holy Ghost. And I just want to say to those folk that think church is boring, I, I want to just say something to those folk that think that church ain't all that no more. The ones that don't think that the pastor jumps up high enough now and moonwalk enough and entertain them enough and all of that. I just want to say to you, if you would just take a moment and open up your heart. Open up. You done locked down on Jesus. You done locked down on Jesus. You done locked Jesus out of your heart. Open up. And watch the Holy Ghost begin to move and move and move in your life. Yeah, Paul had, had, had confronted some things and he was bewildered. Lord, what am I going to do with this church at Corinth? And then they walk around, they, 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 they talk about all of the gifts that they have. 
Oh, yeah, all the day they, they wear it like a, a signboard or a badge or I do this. The, the Holy Ghost gave me this to do and the Holy Ghost gave me this to do it. And I'm one of those that's been anointed to do this and do that. That's the way they were. Paul humbled himself. And he began to speak to them. He said, my brothers, my sisters, ears have not heard. Eyes have not seen. Neither has it entered into the heart of men. Yes, Lord. What he was saying is that with all of these great accolades that you're putting on yourself, patting yourself on the back for, all right, all right. you just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. You just don't know. And, and, and I'm so grateful that once you do know, you'll realize that there are things that God has in store for you. I, I, I get beat up. I get battered. I get disillusioned. I get discouraged sometimes. I, I, I have my own little pity parties at times. I've been having a whole lot of them for the last three months. I, I've been pity party after pity party after pity party. But even in that, God will speak to me and say, what's your problem? Don't you know that I am with you? I have not forsaken. And trouble don't last always. Amen. My trouble going to end this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul let them know in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, he said this. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. We got to love God with all our heart. We got to love God more than we love our husband, more than we love our wife, more than we love our children, our grandchildren, our niece, our uncle, our aunt, our uncle. We got to love God more than all of these. And he says, I got some things in store for you if you just love me. Right. I wonder if I asked you hand to raise your hand now, how many love the Lord? I bet you every last one of you. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. But I want to ask you this too. Does God know you love him? <laughs> See, God knows your heart. Are you trying to love him on Sabbath? And then don't even do that all day Sabbath. <laughs> Just for a couple of hours while you're in, in the presence of the saints when you're at church. And then when you leave, you, you're in the devil's camp. You're partying and juking and smoking and doping and doing all those things. In the church. Talking about church folk now. Church folk. But Paul lets us know. And then if you could go to verse 10. This was really nailed it for me. You see, when we talk about uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which is a paraphrase of Isaiah 64, 24, uh, you see, Paul was just paraphrasing what the prophet Isaiah said when he said, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. He was just paraphrasing. But it, when you look at verse 10, some people think that that means that it's something that's going to happen in the heavenlies. Uh, we're going to have a mansion in the heavenlies. We're going to have uh, streets of gold in the heavenly. It, it, that some people think that uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 is just talking about what's going to happen in the hereafter. Right. In the hereafter, after we've departed this life, and Jesus has come and raptured his church. I ain't scared to say raptured because I understand what it means. But... When God Jesus has come and taken his church away from this place, we feel that 1 Corinthians 2, 9 is just dealing with after that. But if you read verse 10, you'll find something else that's very different. It says, but God hath revealed. Reveal is past tense. All right? It's already happened. But God hath revealed them unto his are us by his spirit. Right. Those that are spiritual are already walking in the blessings of God. Those that are spiritual are already realizing the things that God has for them that love him. 
That's why even though I might have an ache every now and then, I can say I'm healed. That's why when my bank when my bank account gets low and, and the check run out for the month run out, I can still say, I got it. God done worked it out. Y'all don't hear me today. Y'all don't hear me today. Y- y- you see, when we, those of us that have opened our hearts up to the Spirit of God, begin to walk in the Spirit of God, the Bible says that he has already revealed those things which he has for us. And I thank God that we don't just have to wait till it's all over. We can shout right now and say, y'all don't understand what my story is. Y'all just don't know what I've been through. You don't know my story. I don't know yours. You don't know my ups. You don't know my downs. You don't know where God had to bring me from. Oh, I told y'all a little bit, but I ain't told you all. Amen, because you don't need to know all my business. But I got a God that knows everything. And, and hey, hello, somebody. He knows everything about you. The stuff that you done tried to hide from the pastor, the stuff you done tried to hide from your mama, from your daddy, the stuff you done tried to hide from your husband, from your wife, God knows it all. You don't know my story. Thank you, Lord. And I'm glad that you don't. Because you do me just like they did that woman. Uh, Y'all remember last week when I told you about that woman. How they had caught her in adultery. And the first thing they wanted to do was stone her when they were the ones that had taken her into adultery. See, we like to point our finger at other folk. Oh, she ain't this. She ain't that. He ain't this. He ain't that. I remember when. Oh, yes. I remember when. I remember when. But when you point at somebody, three of them fingers, Coming right back at you. Ain't that right, Grandma? Yeah. Ain't that right? No, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what God brought me from. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else you don't know. You don't know where I am now. Hello. You don't know where I am now. A lot of us, we think that we can look at folk and judge them, and we try to put folk in heaven and send other folk to hell. Amen, amen, because they don't walk like us or don't talk like us uh, because they don't believe like us. <laughs> Jesus straightened that thing out. He said, I got sheep in many fold. Oh, you think Turning Point got a monopoly on the gospel of Jesus Christ? You better wake up and smell the raisins there, baby, because we don't have no monopoly on what thus said the Lord. God got folk all over this land, all over this world that have not bowed down to Baal. Yes. Oh, yes. He's got folk in the First Baptist. He's got folk in the Methodist. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this kind of message, do you? Oh, yeah, he's got folk in the Church of God and Jesus Christ. Hello, hello. He's got Pentecostals. Amen. He's got apostolic that are doing the best that they can to do what God said do. Sometimes I wonder if he got some folk here at Turning Point. The way we act sometimes. My Lord. No, you don't know where I am. You don't know. And and, and if you think you know where I am, why don't you check your own door? Sweep around your own front door. Before you try to sweep around mine. Instead of trying to clean my house up, get your own house in order. Thank you, Jesus. Tell you something else you don't know. You don't know where I'm going. 
don't know where I'm going. You don't know. I don't know where you're going. That's not my job. We have to just help each other along the way. For there are two paths. One is straight and the other is broad. Sometimes you might think somebody's on the straight path and they're on Broadway. They're on Broadway. They in the bright lights of Broadway. And Broadway is so cluttered. So many people walking down Broadway. Amen. Attracted by the bright lights in the big city of Broadway. The Bible lets us know that there are going to be many that go down that path. But Broadway leads to destruction. Uh But he says that's another way that's straight. In other words, this way don't have no crooks and no turns in it. It's just straightforward. It's straightforward. See, some of us want a message that has crooks and turns in it. But anything that don't point you to Jesus, that don't lead you to Jesus Christ, our righteousness, our salvation, Anything that doesn't lead you to Jesus, that is not built on the foundation of the rock of Jesus Christ. It's not built on Michael F. Owen. It's not built on Tanya. Not built on Sorrel. Not built on Grandma. It's built on Jesus. Built on Jesus. It's a straight path. And you know something? You can't always look at a person. And tell what path they're on. Because we are professionals at dressing up on the outside. We look good on the outside. We look holy. Oh, I said this is going to be a short message, isn't it? We look holy on the outside. We look righteous on the outside. Got our Bible in our hand. Got our crucifix around our neck. We look holy. But inside, got dead man bones. Inside, I don't care how high you can jump and how much you can say hallelujah and even speak in tongues and do it. Don't y'all know demons speak in tongues too? Oh, y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Speaking in tongues and doing all of those things. E- e- even going around healing folk. That's right. But inside, they are dead men's bones. Oh, you don't know where I'm going. That's why I got to make my calling and the election sure. Because you know, when it's all said and done, Sister America... I can't get you into heaven. You can't get me there. We all going to have to stand on our own two feet. But as those old folks say, every tub got to sit on its own bottom. And some of us done sit on our bottom so long, long it's done rot, rot it out. Done rust it out. Can't hold nothing now. Thank you, Jesus. But I came to you today to tell you, you just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know. You don't know. But I'm mighty glad that we have a God that knows it all. And by his spirit, by his spirit, he has revealed unto man the things that are to be. And I'm trusting in him. Somebody got a problem? I want you to know it's all going to work out. And you ain't got to wait till you get the glory for it to work out. Somebody got a bill need to be paid? I want you to know God will work it out. Amen. Somebody husband ain't doing right? Oh, yeah, God can fix that on this side. Amen. Amen. He's already revealed it through his spirit. It'll happen on this side. Just keep on trusting God. And you got a wife that's crazy and acting like she the lost her ever-loving mind? Lord God, Jesus can fix that on this side. You ain't got to wait till you get the glory. Oh, yeah. Trouble on every hand 
your enemies seem like they're getting the upper hand, I want you to know that Jesus will fix it on this side. Your enemies seem like they're prospering. They're riding around in Cadillacs and Mercedes Benz and all of that. And you know that they're not doing what God said do. And your little put put break down every time you look at it. <laughs> See, like every time you go out there to get in the car, the car get mad with you. Why are you going to drive me today? You done already drove me too much. Got 200 and 300,000 miles on the dash and you still try to drive me. Oh, I can tell you about them car demons. But anybody know that Jesus can fix it on this side. You ain't got to wait to glory before God fixes that. Hallelujah. Can I get a praise right now? Hallelujah. I know that he's going to work it out. He's going to work it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Spend lonely nights. Lonely nights. Y'all don't hear me now, do you? Long, lonely nights. Reaching over here. <laughs> Reaching over here. Turning this way. Turning that way. All night long. I ain't got to wait till I get to glory. Jesus going to fix it on this side. Hallelujah. Let's stand our feet and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we go to the screen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your way. God is going to fix it. God will fix it. Do you believe that God will fix it? And I'm talking about right now. God will fix it. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're facing. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you need. He loves you. And he's going to work it out. Yes. Things are going to work out. 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 Oh, my Lord, my, my, my Lord. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. And see, what, what the situation is is that your enemy just don't know. <laughs> your enemy just don't know. They don't know the God that you serve. They just don't know. They don't know that your breakthrough is coming. That joy is going to come in the morning. Your enemies just don't know that. Oh, they having a party with you right now. They got you rocking and they got you reeling right now. Because they just don't know that things are going to work out. If you just hold on. If you just trust in God, things are going to work out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So hold your job at the schoolhouse, in your home. You just put your finger in the devil's face and you tell him, you just don't know. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Just give it to Jesus. Just give it to Jesus. It's all going to work out. Just give it to Jesus. Amen. 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 Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
God that she is such a fighter. She reminds me so much of her mama. When she set her mind to do something, the gates of hell will not prevail against her. She's trusted God on this journey. She's been sick, so sick, so sick. They told her that cancer had spread all through her body that she had brain tumors covering her whole brain. They told her that they did not expect her to live meaningless. I'm not talking about months. They did not expect her to live weeks. They said that it's pretty much over. They were expecting her to expire any day. But she held on to her faith. And she began to pray and trust God and the saints of God began to pray for her. And when the saints of God come together and we pray, God moves. They had just given her a few weeks. Those few weeks have turned into a few months. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. See, the doctors just don't know my Jesus. They just don't know it. She's holding on and she's able to get about. We don't know what tomorrow will hold, what it will bring. But the word told us don't even worry about tomorrow. Just thank God for today. And every day that God allows her to open up her eyes and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. I rejoice. But what God is doing, I rejoice for what God is doing. How awesome he is. And he has assured us that even though our eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and it hadn't even entered into the hearts of us, the things that God has in store for us, I thank God that if you connect spirit with spirit, you'll begin to walk in the present those things that have been promised in the future. You'll begin to see the reality of what God promised you tomorrow, it'll be here today. And I'm saying that to encourage you because I know you go through. I know you come and you smile and, and, and you present yourself all happy, happy, joy, joy. But I know that the devil is also busy. And when the devil comes, 
shake your hand in his face and say, I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. And tell him, you just don't know my God. You just don't know my God. He'll fight my battles. You just don't know my God. Deaconess, time for our announcements. Amen. Amen.